When deadlifting, should we stop on the ground each rep? Or is it better to do touch and go? Will one lead to better strength and size gains? Are touch and go dangerous? Or does it not matter? Welcome everyone, I'm Dr. Sam Spinelli with Citizen Athletics and today we're gonna to be talking about deadlifts. We are huge fans of deadlifts, deadlifts of all kinds. Conventional, sumo, trap bar, Romanian, single leg deadlifts, you name it, we're probably a fan. If you're a fan of deadlifts, tap that like button below, it really helps us out. Deadlifting is a really beneficial exercise category given that it helps to strengthen your entire posterior chain, working the glutes, hamstrings, spinal erectors, lats, and more. It also helps to develop improved vertical and horizontal force production, which is good for a ton of different sports. And finally, it helps build an impressive physique. If you find someone who is reasonably lean and has a strong deadlift, there's a good chance they've got a look that matches their strength. A common question that arises with most kinds of deadlifts is do you stop on the ground or do you just touch and go? For anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, let's check it out. When most people think of a deadlift, they imagine a conventional deadlift, where we have our feet about hip width apart, hips a bit below our shoulders, and grip outside of our legs. We push into the floor and stand up, getting to full extension of the knees and hips. And from the top, there are a few different options. We can just let go of the bar, but that's frowned upon in most gyms. We can lower down to the ground with control, stop, and then go again. Or we can lower down, tap the ground, and go back up without stopping. These are the two we're looking at and comparing. In the world of competitive deadlifting, touch and go deadlifts are thought of as a complete waste of time. In contrast, if you go to most commercial gyms, touch and go are common to see. Fortunately, instead of relying on just opinions, there's some research that's looked into this. Krajewski 2019 looked at a biomechanical analysis comparing the touch and go and the dead stop deadlift. The researchers had participants do two sessions and perform five repetitions at 75% of their one rep max for two sets. In one session, these were dead stop deadlifts. In the other session, these were touch and go deadlifts. The researchers then compared these two sessions. They looked at the joint angles, the ground reaction force, the net joint impulse, the rating of perceived exertion after each set, and a few more characteristics. The results? The dead stop deadlift required individuals to do more total work per set, working through more average range of motion and having a net higher joint impulse. The touch and go deadlift had more ground reaction force on the concentric, it had faster reps overall, and the participants reported a lower RPE across the sets. Okay, but what does that mean? Well, the obvious is that touch and go is easier to do with the same weight as a dead stop deadlift. So if your goal is to just use the most weight possible, then touch and go is your choice. If you're looking to maximize strength, particularly for the deadlift, then you're likely better off utilizing the dead stop version. Given that it requires more total work with the same weight, challenging you to produce more force with that weight, therefore demanding more neural drive, it will give a higher stimulus. One of the more important things that we can take from this study is that since we start every set with a dead stop deadlift, especially if you're testing your max and only doing a single, this study showed that touching your reps use slightly different positioning. So your skill and specific strength will be less developed with touch and go than dead stop. If your goal is to build muscle, then it's probably best to do both. Since the dead stop did more work and reached a higher RPE, theoretically it would be better for hypertrophy by creating more total tension and getting into more challenging reps. Unfortunately, in the real world, if someone was doing touch and go, they'd probably do six or maybe more reps instead of just the five that was prescribed since it was easier or they might use more weight, which would then counter off that effect anyways. Realistically, for most people, it's probably best to utilize a dead stop version for anything that's six reps or less and emphasizing strength development. Whereas if you're doing more than six reps and you're just focusing on hypertrophy, it's fine to do either and dead stop might be a better option for this. Hopefully that helps to break it down for you. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe below, tap that like button. We really appreciate it. Comment on what you want us to cover in the future and we'll see you in the next video.